no matter who you ask or, or what year you're talking about, the idea of flying cars always seems to come up as cementing when the future has arrived. So what future were we promised? How far have we gotten? And how much further up do we have to go? I'm Marquez Brownlee, and I review dope new tech. But on this show, I'm rewinding the clock to look at the tech of the past that we thought would be our future. This is Retro Tech Flying Cars. Hey, what's up? I'm KBHD here. I know I'm unboxing something today that has something to do with flying cars, that it's this uh, iconic piece of tech that apparently was going to usher us into this new era of personal transportation. We'll see about that. This is definitely the biggest box we've had on this show. There is no indication, though, anywhere on this box what it is. It's like a riddle. What would be a piece of tech that would promise to revolutionize personal transport, but also not fit in a smaller box than this? I'm guessing it's not a flying car. There is a giant wheel. Oh, is this a Segway? Oh, it's a Segway. I know what a Segway is. Okay. I cannot wait to try to ride this. It's really heavy. Oh, I, well, it has to be heavy because it's got a counterbalance. There it is. <laughs> the original Segway. Is it a flying car? No. Is it even a hovercraft? No. Well, let's get into it. This is the Welcome to the Evolution of Personal Mobility pamphlet. Lots of warnings. Don't roll this over bumps. Don't ride this over curbs and steps and obstacles and steep slopes and slippery surfaces and loose materials. Whew. All right. Can I get a helmet? OK. I'm going to be the expert. I'm going to put all the swag that came with it on. Just segue armband. The expert would probably have this on, right? It's too bad I'm too swole for this. I'll probably have to put it on my wrist. That is nerdy, wow. I hate to break it to you, Segway, but this is the nerdiest part of this whole thing. There you go. Let's fire it up. Oh. Okay. I'm a little dizzy. I'll be right back. Wow. That was fun. Is this a flying car? No. But this is my segue into the next segment. I'm gonna have you check underneath your chair. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's my buddy. <laughs> oh, guys. It's the, the 80s. It's the 80s in a car. DeLorean, a DNC 12 with Mr. Fusion on the back. This is the, the flying car that most people think of when they think of a flying car. All right, I guess let's walk back to like the concept of flying cars in general. Why was this such a, an obsession for us? It's kind of not surprising that Americans would be obsessed with flying cars because we're just a car culture. The key to the automotive interest in the United States has been always that notion of freedom. Well, the automobile has brought with it a new way of life. And that freedom is just key to the American experience. Cars are everything in America. Even though we don't have flying cars today, it's not because we didn't try. Just an ordinary plane, but wait. There's been multiple versions of attempts of cars that were supposed to fly, and they <coughs> crashed. One of the earliest flying cars that actually looked like it had a road to production. It was called the Aero Car way back in the 1940s. The Aero Car it had the wings in the back that could turn it into a functioning airplane. And the 60 mile an hour car takes off. Let's put traffic woes behind us and try that wild blue yonder. Is it a car that can fly, or is it just a plane that can be broken down? <laughs> Cooler heads prevailed, and the aero car didn't move forward. OK, so there were actually some attempts at flying cars for real. But how did science fiction impact like how we thought about flying cars? 
Science fiction has really been obsessed with flying cars. Movies like Blade Runner and Star Wars and of course Back to the Future. The first time I ever saw a flying car was in the Jetsons. The Jetsons have moving sidewalks, very similar to the ones that we see in airports, television screens where they can video chat like we do with FaceTime, and they have flying cars. So you say to yourself, well, well, why not flying cars? Why can't I have a flying car in my garage? It's the ultimate fantasy for everyone, but obviously there are all sorts of challenges to making that happen in real life. So science fiction can help us imagine the future, but just envisioning a piece of technology isn't enough to bring it into being. No matter how compelling the idea of a flying car may seem, the technology and the physics just doesn't seem to want to play along. So today, I'm meeting up with fellow car tech enthusiast Gally Russell from HyperChange to find out just how close or how far we are from this future of flying cars. All right, so I guess the basic challenge for a car like this today to get it to fly is to get all the air underneath it. Yeah, it's a first principles physics problem of literally moving all of this air super quickly with enough force to get some sort of lift off. Getting all that air underneath the car, that sounds like a lot of energy. To lift it off the ground, we would need 1.6 megawatts of power. And that just gets you into the air and then you have to stay there. Yeah. Even if we theoretically solve that problem, how are we transferring the air below the car? So there's two schools of thought of how we can actually get enough force at once to lift this thing. You could have some sort of propeller system, basically like a huge drone. Right. And then you have Elon and Tesla working on literally repurposing rocket tech with all these kind of mini cold gas thrusters to get it to lift off. Okay, so a, a system like this, if you were to build it into this car, how would it work? Where would you put it? So this is where the system would go. Okay, so the back seats are just gone? Yeah, we're pushing the laws of physics. You'd need to use all the space. So that's the cold, compressed air, the pumps, the thruster, everything's going back here. Yeah. That's a dramatic amount of space to remove from the inside of the car. Yeah. So basically to get this nearly 5,000 pound car off the ground, you would need around 1.6 megawatts of power for the car to hover with no forward movement. And this model's 100 kilowatt hour battery would be able to sustain that hovering for about three to four minutes, as opposed to the nearly 400 miles you'd be able to travel if you stayed on the ground. And the calculations only account for the weight of the driver, so if you want to bring your friends along, your time in the air would be even shorter. All right, so we're making our way into the future. The original idea for flying cars, though, was just like, get from point A to point B. Maybe there's better versions of that future that aren't flying. The Tesla in some way embodies that because what makes it so advanced is not that it can fly, but it has software. You know, it can kind of drive itself. I wasn't around in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s when we were imagining flying cars. So when I first was growing up and thinking about future of cars, I didn't think they should fly. I thought, wow, they should be more like the high-tech stuff we have today. And now we're actually kind of seeing that start to happen. Our desire to innovate and create the next revolutionary technology is never ending. And so while we may still be pretty far away from a world of flying cars, there is another type of cutting edge flying tech that we've been dreaming about for decades. I need to bore you. Hoverboard? Nothing captured the imagination more than hoverboards. I wanted one. I know as a kid, that's something you could feel you could talk your parents into buying you. A DeLorean, not so much. I mean, what's better than a skateboard than a skateboard that can lift you off the ground? And I remember as a kid believing that these things might actually be real. As a joke, Robert Zemeckis, before the film came out, gave an interview and said that hoverboards were real. They've been around for years. It's just that parents groups have not let the toy manufacturers make them. We got our hands on some. Of course, it was all made up, it was all part of the marketing buzz, but it made so many kids excited that everybody wanted them. But it never really came to any sort of reality until we started to hear about this revolution in personal transport. So it's the early 2000s, and we start to hear this buzz about this transportation product from Dean Kamen, who was already a well-respected inventor. It was codenamed Ginger. Steve Jobs comes out and says, this next thing is gonna be bigger than the PC. It is rumored to be the technological advance of this century, an invention that could change the way people live, bigger perhaps than the internet. It's finally time for the big reveal. So we all tune in to Good Morning America, which was the biggest morning show of all time. Dean Kamen is standing there talking with Charlie Gibson and Diane Sawyer. They lift the curtain. We have to do something here. And it is... The Segway. It's the Segway. Okay. 
It's basically a scooter. The best part about that launch is Diane Sawyer trying to hide her disappointment at finally seeing this thing. I'm tempted to say that's it. <laughs> <laughs> there was something about the Segway that just evaporated people's dignity. It kind of, I guess, lacked that cool effect. Because let's be honest, once they removed the handlebars and they became hoverboards, people were going crazy for them. This is what everybody's talking about. It's like a Segway without the handle. They're also referred to as hoverboards. The 360 hoverboard, the antithesis of the Segway. Celebrities are riding them, like Justin Bieber and Kendall Jenner and Martha Stewart, who is obviously the coolest. And then the other weird thing about it is that it caught fire all the time. <laughs> it got so bad that Saturday Night Live actually had to do a parody. And now they're literally the hottest because they also explode. Ultimately, they were a failure because they were a failure, but they also didn't live up to the thing that we all wanted, which was Back to the Future 2 hovering above ground. Despite tech companies' best efforts, hoverboards over the years haven't had the best reputation. So I'm here with actor, writer, and comedian Michael Ian Black, and we're gonna test out a few of these models to see if any of them won't kill you. This is Doper Nope. Michael, thanks for joining me. What is your experience with hoverboards over the years? Almost none. Okay, perfect. I guess we just get into the first one. Here it is under our desk here. Uh, this is what this is what I'm used to. Right. I'm from this era. So you have experience with this? I do. Do you? No. Oh, this is gonna be good. No. Okay. Marquez, I'm 49 years old. Mm -hmm. What this looks like to me is a stress fracture. <laughs> okay. So you look kind of like this. Yeah, that is not superior to walking. But you just look so much cooler. This is <laughs> this is already dope. I know I'm giving this a dope already. This is amazing. I mean, you do look cool on it because you have a kind of confidence on it that I right. don't think I'm gonna possess. Oh, all right. Oh, geez. Oh, so, come on! <laughs> Jesus. All right, here. Oh my God, so I've feel never flat? felt older in my life. <laughs> Slowly get your bounce. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to move. All right. That's not bad. There you go. There you go. Do I look terrified? You look better than if you're walking that speed. Yeah. Oh my God. You were really good at that. I love this thing. I have to give it a dope. Much to my dismay, I also have to give it a dope because I want to be able to do it. All right, dope. Next up. Oh, geez. Oh boy. I've never seen so, one of these. It's called the air wheel. Mm -hmm. To me, it looks like a rascal that you drive around in uh, in the grocery store, except that just so much less safe. I'll try it. You wanna give it a shot? Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get on it. Do you think kickstand out and you just go for it? Just <laughs> give me a second. All right. I'm terrified. Bailing looks a lot harder on that. But you look comfortable. Yeah, well, I'm sitting. <laughs> I'm sitting is something that I feel like I do fairly well. I know I look like I'm taking a right now. When you're too lazy to walk and yeah. even too lazy to stand, this is the gizmo for you. You wanna try it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you looked much cooler on the other one. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this feels kind of ominous. <laughs> this is a great solution to a problem nobody had. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a nope. Nope. All right, next up. Ooh, that's heavy. Wow. Segway Robotics. I mean, I'm sold right here. Robot inside. The future is coming, which is pervy. I'm sorry, that's perverted. It's got a name, Luma. Open the box from the front. That's the front. Well, that seems to be the robot. Ow. Look at the size of this. Here's the power button. Does it balance itself and roll around by itself? Seems to. I'm gonna get on it and see what happens. All right. It's a hoverboard in some respects, but I'm not even sure what it does. I know my feet go here. Much easier to get on than the other thing. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, it's cool, but what is its purpose? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, there's a transform button. Oh, it transforms? You transform it, the head swivels around and it's a robot. Weird, okay. Lumo, personal companion. Follow me. 
Here you are. I will follow you now. Please watch out for the people around. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's your personal transportation and it's your camera on wheels. Hey, Lumo, follow me. I cannot find you. Hey, Lumo, I stand in front of follow me. I found you. Hey, Lumo, follow me. Follow me, Lumo. I cannot find you. I'm right here. There you are. I found you. I found you. I found you. That's locked in right now. <laughs> Lumo, sit. Lumo, stop following. I cannot find you. Please stand in front of me. I cannot find you. Lumo. Please stand in. There you are. I found you. I cannot find you. Please stand in front of. There you are. <laughs> the technology is perfect. God, it's so cool, and I hate to say it, but there's just no good use of it, and I can't imagine it's cheap. So that's a nope. I agree with your entire assessment. It's nope. Sorry, Lumo. I cannot find you. Although we're not quite there yet, in theory, riding around on hoverboards is a future that's within our grasp. So to find out just how close we may be now to that reality, I'm gonna to speak to a duo that's spent the last 10 years perfecting their hoverboard technology. Alexander Duru and Philippe Malouf from Omni Hoverboards. So if you were to explain this hoverboard to me, someone who's never seen it, what is it and how does it work? The hoverboard uses propellers. The propellers apply force on a larger area. Using the propellers, that's the challenge. And to succeed with it, that in itself was the innovation. The Omni Hoverboard has an array of 10 miniature propellers, which are powered by a bank of batteries in the center console and a handheld throttle that allows the rider to control the height, which can be as high as 100 meters. How do you think your hoverboard is different from the hoverboards that people saw in like movies and TV that they might be inspired by. Well, one thing about the movie, Back to the Future Part Two, it was an extension of a skateboard. And a lot of people wanted to create a hoverboard that looked visually like the one in the movie. But for us to have a hoverboard that functions the way it does in the movie, we had to not care about how it looks. It's all about functionality. It's not like you're riding the vehicle. It's you yourself that's flying. You lean in one direction, you will go forward in that direction. It's like a surfboard, but you're surfing the air. It's biomechanical, it's an extension of your body. It's a bit like you acquired a superpower. I'm sort of picturing like a futuristic field where there's a bunch of people all sort of hovering around and going through these courses. It's a fun world to picture. Yeah, it's fun just to fly, like it's a real trip. I mean, you know, I, I, some people just want to fly it. I think that's the best part of the hoverboard. The very idea that you're flying. It's a classic dream of mankind. I think the hoverboard could be the beginning of something. After all that, I guess it uh, turns out flying cars, aka giving everyone helicopters, <laughs> is probably not the best idea. But I still love the idea of recreational individual flight. Like, I think if you ask anyone what superpower they would want to have, a lot of people would say they would just want to be able to fly like a bird. So maybe let's keep working on that. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.